Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Tech Tutor. Today let's talk about Prometheus and Grafana. So if you're thinking about how do I monitor my server, get all kinds of useful metrics, figure out if my APIs are taking too long or if we've had some server downtime or any other issues, the great thing is you have some free tools you can use and you don't have to pay for them at all. Like I just said, they're completely free. This is important because there's all these paid tools out there and you can hook these up quick and I'll show you how to in this video. So just stick with me and we'll go through it really quickly. I'll show you how to use Docker. We'll spin up the containers, do a little bit of configurations and then show you how you can get these dashboards from some pre-built uh, Grafana dashboards that are in the community. So let's go ahead and get started now. Okay, so I have this Spring Boot project and it's pretty easy to get Prometheus and Grafana up and running. So we're gonna use a Docker Compose file to spin up a Prometheus container and a Grafana container. So as you can see in my file here, you have the name of the image, the ports of the container, and then I am going to have a Prometheus YAML configuration file. So I'm mapping that to the container. Then there is also the Grafana image and the ports that it runs on. Next, let's take a look at the Prometheus YAML. You can see here that I am configuring the scrape interval and evaluation interval. And then I'm also configuring the spring actuator metrics path. So that way it can find the actuator slash Prometheus details that spring provides to us. The scrape interval of five seconds. And then the static configs will tell Prometheus where the server is. So you, you basically need to set this to the IP of your server as well as the port number. Next, let's take a look at the POM. There's not much in there either. This is, again, pretty easy to set up. So if you have a Spring Boot project, you can just add this Spring Boot Starter Actuator dependency and that will expose a lot of the metrics that Prometheus needs. I have the Spring Boot Starter Web dependency so that way I can run a web project. And then of course we wanna have our Prometheus dependency as well. Then going into our application YAML, this is where we're going to expose specific metrics that we'd like from Actuator. So we need the Prometheus API, the health API is optional, but I, I like to include that one, the info API and the metrics one. If you wanna include more or less, feel free to go check out the documentation for Actuator and the different APIs that you can enable. And then lastly, I made a test controller. This is because I'm going to showcase how Prometheus can track your APIs and show you if you have any long running APIs because they'll show you the average amount of time it's taking for each API to come back after a call has been made to it. So we have this short one, which should come back almost instantaneously. And then this long one where I'm intentionally adding a five second sleep so we can see that this API is taking longer than your other APIs basically. And then let's go ahead and run. Next, in order to spin up Prometheus and Grafana, we're gonna to go to terminal. Now, to start our containers, all we need to do is docker compose up dash D. And this is because I put the docker compose file in this directory here. And now you can see that it has started up the Grafana and the Prometheus container. So let's go ahead and check those out in the browser so that way we can configure them to get our graphs. Now that everything is up and running, we can go ahead and view Prometheus by going to localhost 9090. As you can see here, this is the graph portion of Prometheus. This will allow us to look up statistics, but let's go ahead and make sure that it is properly picking up our server. So we'll go to status and targets. As you can see, it was able to find our server that is running on 8080. So if you have any issues, this is a good place to start. So that way you can make sure that everything is up and running because if this is down, you'll know that that's why you can't get any metrics. So now we'll go back to graph. And now we're gonna type into the search bar, HTTP server request seconds sum divided by HTTP server request seconds count. This will show us the average amount of time it takes to hit certain APIs. 
So now I'm also going to hit our long and our short API, so that way I can showcase how even if you didn't have Grafana, you could still get similar information. So let's go over to our short API first, which is very quick. And now let's go to our long API. This one, I've added that five second wait. So as you can see, it's still loading. Okay, there we go. So now it has loaded both of these APIs. Let's go ahead and execute this again. And now you can see that it actually tracked that long API as taking five seconds and the short API took less than a second. So you can do a lot of cool things in Prometheus alone, but now let's go over to Grafana to help us visualize this data. To go to Grafana, we just need to go to localhost 3000. And now to log in, it is admin, admin, at least that's the default we have right now. I would suggest you would change this if you put it on a real server. We're going to skip this for now, just because this is just for test purposes. And now you need to add a data source in order for it to pick up Prometheus. So go to this gear icon and then click data sources. Now you're going to click add data source and we're going to select Prometheus. For the URL, you're going to put the localhost 9090 and then we're going to select browser as the access and then click save and test. It'll validate that this is working. And now we'll click back. So now we have that Prometheus data source set up. And now let's go ahead and import some popular dashboards from the Grafana website. So we'll go to add with this plus button, import. And now we're going to add two of my favorite dashboards. So there is one, which is the JVM dashboard, which can be found at grafana.com slash grafana dashboards 4701. Go ahead and click load and then we will select our Prometheus data source and click import. And as you can see in this, it's got a lot of useful information. There's uptime, heap used, non-heap used, the start time. It also has the average duration of your HTTP calls. So if I submitted a bunch more calls, you'll see this graph changing. And lots of other useful information here. Let's go ahead and add one of my other favorite dashboards and we'll do that in a different tab. So I'll right click and I'll say open a new tab. And now this dashboard is the micrometer spring throughput dashboard. So we'll go ahead and import this one as well after I select Prometheus. And on this dashboard, you can see the request per second. So it is showing you that most of the requests are going to actuator Prometheus. And in a moment here, I will submit more requests to test slash long and test slash short. It shows the mean response time, the top 10 APIs, and response time. So let me go ahead and submit some more requests. I'll submit quite a few of these just to show that it is getting hit a lot. Also submit a long request. Let's go ahead and submit one more. And now if you refresh this dashboard, you could see as it starts to show some information about these. So you could see over here on this far right side that you can actually tell that the test long was five seconds and test short was less than a second. You could also see down here your top APIs and you can see that test short was getting hit more than test long because I did submit more requests there. We could even zoom in. And then you can also see the request per second in here, which is showcasing how often your APIs are getting hit. So overall, this dashboard is very useful for helping you to get an idea of your APIs that are getting hit, the throughput, if there's APIs that are taking a long time, you can kind of diagnose this. And over time, you'll collect a lot of data. This will help you immensely in trying to triage if there's any bottlenecks in your APIs or any issues that might be popping up that you're not seeing real time, but you would see in this graph and you could track back to if you had some sort of outage at 2 a.m., maybe what API had caused that. Let's go back to our other dashboard. 
and we'll refresh this one. We'll zoom in, zoom in a little bit more. And now you can see where you're getting these spikes of the HTTP response time. This is what I was saying earlier about how you could end up telling when your server is taking longer to respond. You'll see that you had a max response time of five seconds during these two intervals. And now with the other dashboard, we could tell exactly which APIs were causing this. But if you were just trying to take a look at a glance, you would be able to see that during these times, there was something going on that was causing a longer response time. And then again, as you keep running this for a longer period of time, you have all of these metrics with CPU usage, load, threads, the JVM heap, and other useful information. So again, I hope this was a very useful video just to help you get started with Prometheus. You can obviously tweak these dashboards or even make your own dashboards. There's a lot more you can do, but this video was just a basic video to help you get started and showcase how valuable Prometheus and Grafana are, and they're absolutely free. There's other tools out there that you can pay for, but I don't know why you'd want to pay for those unless you have very special needs when you could get this much value from open source free tools. In this video, I only scratched the surface of the potential for these tools. Grafana even gives you the capability to send alert messages as well. If you found value in this video, please take a moment and give it a like and subscribe for future content. Let me know in the comments what your favorite part was and if there's anything you'd like to know more about. Thanks for watching this video on Prometheus and Grafana.